Please be seated. When I was serving a parish up north, I was in charge of the children's Christmas Eve service. So I decided one year to put a little story together, a small skit, to talk about the meaning of Christmas. The story centered around the character of Miss Piggy. Miss Piggy is a central character in the Muppets, and I figured everybody, all the kids and all the families, would know who she is. And the story was about a small group of people who were preparing for Christmas. And they needed a star. They needed a star to put over the crash. A big star so that everybody could see it shining. <clears throat> so they decided to take the star off of Miss Piggy's dressing room door. <laughs> well, Miss Piggy comes rushing into the scene, very upset, wanting her star back, and somebody begins to tell her about the baby Jesus and how much Jesus needs the star, needs the star to put over the manger a star to light the way so that everybody who comes to the manger knows that this is Jesus, knows that he is the Messiah, and won't she please, please give her star to Jesus. Miss Piggy gives over her star, and we then place the star over the nativity scene. And the service went on, the families, the children, we all celebrated Christmas Eve. At this parish, they had a beautiful crash nativity scene. It was so beautiful that when the church was decorated for Christmas, it was the last thing to be put out. And it was placed at the bottom of the steps to the altar. And then once it was up, a thin piece of glass was placed around it. This was to keep the dust out and to keep, preserve the figures, but also so that nobody could touch any of the pieces of the nativity scene. I didn't even know where it was kept. It was put out by just a few senior members of the altar guild. And they had a really beautiful, tiny little calligraphy sign way at the bottom corner that said, please do not touch. <laughs> well, about three days after Christmas Eve, I was approached by the head of the altar guild, who was very angry with me. You see, in the children's service, when Miss Piggy gives her star back, we take the star and we place it over in the nativity scene. Not on it, but over it. It was quite large, big star on a stick. Just like this. Just like this. <laughs> big and bright so that everybody could see it. But I forgot to take it down before the rest of the Christmas Eve services. So the altar guild was furious with me. And I was in a lot of trouble. <laughs> and I said to them, but that's not as bad as when I put the balloons around the altar and they floated up and set the fire alarm off. <laughs> <laughs> and they were so angry. They said, how could you put such a tacky, ugly looking star over the beautiful crash? So I went into the church and there it was. And I thought, you know, it doesn't really look that bad. And I stood there and I looked at these figurines, I looked at the figures around the nativity, I looked at Mary and Joseph and the shepherds, and all these characters and all the people that came from far and wide to see the baby Jesus born in a stable. And I sort of laughed a little bit and I thought of the irony of creating a scene that's so beautiful that nobody can touch it. When there was baby Jesus born in hay, in a stable, in a barn, where everybody was welcome to come and visit the word, Jesus, who was born to dwell among us, to become one of us. Emmanuel, God with us. Jesus, the word that became flesh. I often think about that particular event, especially around Christmas when we put the Christmas decorations out. Each year we make the direct decorations beautiful, perfect, and bright. And Christmas Day comes, and they look magnificent. But what about the day after? I took the tacky star down over the nativity set in the church, but I never put it away. I didn't put it away. I've kept it out for years as a reminder to me, a reminder that, yes, that was an event that happened that one Christmas, and I would make sure it never happened again. But I also kept it out to remember the star. 
That is what remains, the star. The things that we take down and put away can never be forgotten. A friend said to me the other day, well, Christmas is over. All the hoopla, all the preparation, all the decorating for that one day. And I said to her, it's not just one day. Christmas is only the beginning. Midnight on Christmas Day does not mean that it ends. I mean, we move on, we take down decorations, we put away things, and we box them up for next year. But our lives as Christians, Christmas Day, December 25th, we've only just begun. Christmas is the beginning of calling us back, back to how we began to know Jesus. We don't just celebrate a birthday at Christmas. We celebrate the beginning of our faith, the start of God's desire to become human, to live and dwell among us. Christmas isn't just one day when we're called back to kneel at the nativity and to recall what happened in Bethlehem. Christmas is asking us to begin to remember every day the word that became flesh the baby that became our Messiah, the Son of God, the Savior, Christ, to turn back to the stable and recognize that it was the wood of the crib that would become the wood of the cross. The Gospel of John is the most profound description of the birth of Christ. In the beginning was the Word. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. And that word continues to dwell among us. The light of Christ is the light that outshines the darkness. And when the Christmas lights are taken down, it's the cross that remains lit. That can never, ever be put away. And the cross reminds us of that light of Christ. And it becomes our responsibility, our job, to keep that light lit. It's like this star. And this star is the reason I began my fervent campaign to keep out at least one decoration all year round, to keep out one Christmas decoration all year. Next week, we'll begin to put our Christmas things away. We'll move on to another season. The 12 days would have come and gone. We'll come to church. We'll go away from church. We'll come to Christ. We'll leave Christ. No matter how many times we come and go, no matter how many times we get angry at God, no matter how many times we praise God, we'll have great faith, we'll have no faith. Up and down. Our lives will go up and down. But one thing will remain, the Word. The Word remains with us. Christmas is the beginning of the truth that God has come to us wherever we are. The only human being and divine spirit that walked on the earth has come to us, has been given to us, and we receive grace upon grace. And we are asked to do only one thing in return, one thing, to recognize that light, to be the faithful body, not just at Christmas, but every day, that recognizes the light of Christ that is dwelling among us, The holiday, the day might be over, but Christmas is just the beginning. The cross, our symbol of faith, the creche would become the cross, and that is the truth of the incarnation. It is part of who we are, the word that came among us and dwells within us. It is in us. It is with us. And that is a truth that we can never, ever pack away. It's in heaven.